course, everybody, I'm Chris Saunders. With just two weeks to go until the start of the 2012 Caribbean Volleyball Championships, our men's and women's national volleyball teams were looking to get in a good practice. However, they suffered a serious setback last night. Jonathan Benson has the story. Breaking last night outside the Kendall Isaacs gym has left both our senior national teams without uniforms. The Adidas uniforms, which had just arrived, were stolen out of the truck of Bahamas Volleyball Federation First Vice President Joe Smith. There were a total of 50 uniforms valued at some $5,000. We went to the police um, last night and we did a report. Um, um, they couldn't do any fingerprinting because it was raining. Um, so they said they couldn't dust anything. And we filed a report with um, a value on the um, goods. And we, last night, we started to send out some letters to business firms to try and see if they, someone can come on board to help us defray that cost and buying them back again. Now, there are no significant leads as yet, but Smith is still holding out hope. Manager of one of the teams is Sergeant um, Adley, and he was there along with the coach who saw what happened, and they, they went to the police and they did a report, and, and hopefully they haven't called us as yet or nothing. We don't know if they found anything. But, you know, we can't wait, sit back and wait on that because we need uniforms to send these teams off. Now, with Smith just having received the uniforms, they had yet to be printed, so finding them may be easier said than done. Uh, they're in the, in the uh, plastic, um, haven't been removed as yet. No numbers on them, no Bahamas flags on them as yet, so they're brand new, so, you know, they can use them and sell them and whatever may happen. But we hope that the, the culprits, them, that they would return them even if they just bring them back to the gym here and throw them on the floor to one of the securities, we will appreciate that. Now, following the situation last night, Smith says they simply had to shut practice down. It was a blow that hit them because, you know, on a national team, they look forward to new uniforms and, and how the team is going to look, how Team Bahamas is going to look. And um, when they found that that happened, everybody was, you know, in dismay. Now, the BVF was expected to name both of its teams last night for the Caribbean Championships. That, however, was postponed and will now take place tomorrow night. Jonathan Benson, ZNS, Total Sports. All right, Jonathan, thanks a lot. Some basketball news now. The 8th Annual Kevin K.J. Johnson Junior Development League is in full swing now at the, at the C.I. Gibson Gym. The league is now into its third week and will run until the end of July. We just want to keep these young men busy during, during the summer months. And, uh, you know, it's all about just doing the positive things in these young men's lives. And hopefully a lot of them will get scholarship opportunities to go to school. You know what I mean? Uh, there's a lot of foolishness going on today. And a couple of hours to keep them busy in a positive environment. We have speakers coming to talk to them about life, about God, about uh, doing the right things and staying out of trouble. You know, gangbang is not the way to go. And... You know, it's, it's all about us keeping, keeping them focused on doing the right things. Almost a decade under his belt, KJ is happy with the way the league is progressing, saying that there is growth every year. Players are still coming in. We have 18 teams as we speak, and uh, we, we're looking to expand it next year. It's all about scheduling, you know. Uh, it's, you know, and once, we, once we get the schedule down, our park will be fine. Uh, if we have to uh, add uh, another day or two, that's fine. But, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we need to keep, uh, keep growing and keeping the young men busy off the streets. On to some track news now. At the B3A's Olympic Trials, Raymond Higgs won the long jump competition with a best jump of 7.86 meters or about 25 feet 9 and a half inches. He feels good about his performance but thinks he could do a whole lot better, especially with the A standard being a possibility. All I could do is try to execute, but I thank God for getting me here. And I mean, it's always good to jump in front of the Bahamas and show them what you're doing. But fortunately, I jumped up trying to get the A standard, but I didn't. What, where do you think you fell down in terms of trying to go after that A standard? Well, I mean, the crowd was a little off, but all you got to do is work, do, work what you have. So, I mean, I didn't get it, but I have one more meet to try to get it. So, From a technical standpoint, you said that you have one more meet. What do you think you're going to have to work on really hard in that meet from a technical standpoint to try to go after that A standard? That's probably getting my approach dialed in. Try to get to the board, stay over the board, and get up. The Bahamas Olympic Committee and the B3A is treated to a special breakfast on Saturday by Scotiabank. At that time, Managing Director Kevin Tisnick presented the BOC with a $20,000 check to, to defray some of the costs for this year's Summer's Olympics. BOC Secretary General Romel Fishnell says these kinds of gestures go a long way.
been able to increase the stipend to the athletes under the coaches 10, uh, 100%. And so we're very grateful for that. And um, obviously, it's a, the Olympic breakfast sponsored by Scotia Bank, and it's an opportunity for the athletes to mingle. Um, and Kevin to mingle. Um, he's from Canada. Uh, uh, he's very enthused about athletics and developing and promoting youth in our country. So it's an opportunity of meet and greet with him. And shortly thereafter, the B3As and the BOC will have an administration meeting with the potential members of the team um, to discuss some pertinent matters important to London uh, and some house cleaning before we get to London. Now, some of those very important matters discussed were discussed, especially with the, OC, the BOC and the athletes. There's an issue with where we should host a training camp, whether we should have one in the Bahamas or one in London. Um, there's the presentation of the Olympic uniform. Um, there's the athlete agreement that has to be signed by both the athlete and the BOC. Um, there's the travel arrangements, the preferred dates, uh, you know, uh, of the Olympic Games, or any special needs that they may have. Uh, you know, we're here really to serve the athlete, so it's a, we're going to tell them what we would like, and then they tell us in return what they would like for the Bahamas Olympic Committee to do, because we want them to have the best experience ever. Um, I want, just want to sensitize the Bahamas that there's a lot of things that happen prior to the athletes winning a medal, and that is the preparation for these games. And they, it, just don't it just didn't start this year. They, some of them started four years ago, right after the last Olympic Games in Beijing. On to some boxing news. Now, despite the lack of support for boxing, well-known boxer Ray Minus Jr. is optimistic that the sport is on the right track. He and his partners will do their best to train prospects so that they can reach their full potential. With an increase in crime, Minus feels boxing is a good outlet for the youth. The young persons out there who are on the street doing nothing can come in and, and, and make a career, become a world champion. You know, right now, boxing is producing by far more money in the sport uh, with Floyd Mayweather and Mark Manny Pacquiao. Those guys making $50 million a fight. That will do it for sports. I'm Chris Onis. Your final look at weather is still to come.